Getting a hold of money, power, and influence isn't a walk in the park, trust me. It requires time, effort, and a fair share of behind-the-scenes maneuvering. Or, if you're fortunate, you might just be born into a family that's already got it all. This video is about the fascinating conspiracy theory that claims these most powerful families in the world own 99% of the wealth, leaving 1% for the rest of the world to fight over. These are families that have a hold in almost every sphere of life, be it politics, business, or entertainment. These guys are so rich and powerful that Ambani and Gates seem like regular folks next to them. Their beliefs and networks are kept under wraps, away from public knowledge. That's why we're in the dark about them. If you don't recognize them, don't sweat it. That's exactly how they planned it. Now, let's get started. Rothschild family. If you're familiar with conspiracy theories, the name Rothschild has likely crossed your path more than once. From the wildest tales to the seemingly plausible, it appears that the Rothschilds have left their mark on almost every conspiracy theory out there. I mean, a quick scroll through the first page of Google can lead you to believe that they've had a hand in everything, from controlling every central bank on the planet to manipulating the weather itself. With a staggering combined net worth of $400 billion, it's only natural to wonder, who exactly are the Rothschilds? Are they alien emissaries orchestrating global events, or are they just an immensely wealthy family navigating the complex world of finance? The reality is a bit more grounded. The Rothschilds are an international banking and finance dynasty of German descent. Their ascent to international prominence began in the early 18th century, and since then, they've established operations spanning across Europe. Their influence was so significant that they were even granted nobility by the Austrian government. So, while they are undeniably immensely wealthy, they are, at their core, a family deeply rooted in the world of international banking and finance. Let's delve into the intriguing historical narrative of the Rothschild family, with their initial rise to power attributed to Meyer Rothschild. His exceptional financial acumen catapulted him into prominence within the global banking industry, setting the stage for a legacy that would transcend generations. Meyer strategically placed his five sons in key financial capitals across Europe, solidifying the family's influence. Their adaptability during the Industrial Revolution marked a period of substantial economic growth in Europe positioning the Rothschilds in an oligopolistic stronghold in the world trade of oil and metals. Their financial prowess reached a point where they could lend money to entire nations, a feat unparalleled in its magnitude. Their clientele expanded beyond the realm of traditional wealth. They were the financial architects behind loans to entire governments. In 1825, the Rothschilds played a pivotal role in averting a market liquidity crisis by supplying a substantial amount of coin to the Bank of England. Their influence extended to supporting France with loans after its defeat by Prussia, and remarkably, they granted a £4 million loan to the British government with only a few hours' notice. It was a testament to their unparalleled financial strength. They were, to put it simply, rolling in money. However, as time progressed, the Rothschild family adopted a more understated approach to their financial superpower status. While still undoubtedly influential, they shifted towards a low-key demeanor in comparison to their historical prominence. Despite their immense wealth, the Rothschild family has chosen a path of philanthropy, generously donating substantial quantities of art to charitable causes. In a deliberate move to avoid ostentatious displays of affluence, their approach has been one of understated elegance. This shift in demeanor is particularly noticeable when considering their surrealistic party in the 70s, an event that left a lasting impression and has become the stuff of nightmares for some. The Rothschilds, however, remain shrouded in an air of mystery, perpetuating the fascination and fueling conspiracy theories that swirl around them. This mystique is undoubtedly a consequence of their profound power and influence. 
The very mention of the Rothschild name is enough to evoke curiosity and speculation, with various conspiracy theories attributing them to everything from the assassination of John F. Kennedy to combating climate change. While these theories may captivate the imaginations of enthusiasts, the veracity of such claims remains a subject of debate. The Rothschild family's choice to lead a more private and philanthropic existence has done little to dispel the air of intrigue that surrounds them. As they continue to navigate the complex world of finance and global affairs, their legacy remains firmly entwined with the enigma that is the Rothschild name, the Windsor family. Now, let's explore the illustrious Windsor family, a household name in the realm of royalty and undeniably one of the most popular and influential groups globally. With family branches extending across Europe, their influence spans continents, making them a truly global force. The Windsor's impact isn't confined to mere geopolitical boundaries. It quite literally encompasses the entire globe. The mere thought of such widespread influence might even inspire some to seek out their own Windsor heir to marry, given the family's unparalleled reach and prestige. Delving into the latest generation of British royalty, the wealth amassed by Prince William and Kate Middleton's three children, George, Charlotte, and Louis, is nothing short of astounding. It goes beyond a life of luxury. These young royals are making a significant financial mark as well. To put it in perspective, Prince George is already valued at a staggering $2.8 billion, showcasing the immense financial influence of this burgeoning generation of Windsors. His sister Charlotte follows suit with a net worth of $4.3 billion, demonstrating that they're not just living in opulence, but also making substantial contributions to their family's wealth. Remarkably, these young royals have already entered the realm of ten digit wealth, a feat achieved well before hitting double digits in age. The Windsor's sphere of influence extends well beyond the confines of a nation with a GDP of $2.7 trillion. Their impact transcends the borders of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and England, encompassing every continent on Earth. Yes, you read that right. Even Antarctica isn't exempt from the reach of the Windsors. Their influence knows no geographical bounds. Venturing into some fascinating corners of the globe, we find instances that highlight the Windsors' global significance. Take the South Pacific island of Tana, for instance, where the Duke of Edinburgh was revered as a literal god. Such veneration showcases the familial influence on cultures far removed from the United Kingdom. In Canada, a country in North America, the Windsor's presence is not just symbolic, but deeply ingrained in everyday life. Queen Elizabeth's portrait graces the $20 bill, a testament to the enduring connection between the Canadian people and the royal family. It's an interesting twist that might sound a little peculiar to those unaccustomed to such expressions of reverence. Here's a fascinating tidbit. Queen Elizabeth technically lays claim to one-sixth of the Earth's land mass. So it's no surprise to spot her face on a few bills. After all, she's not just a royal figurehead. She's the largest landowner globally. The Queen's extensive holdings exceed a staggering six billion acres, solidifying her status as the largest landlord on the planet. As if that weren't impressive enough, she also holds the esteemed position of head of state in 16 countries. These nations collectively form what's known as the Commonwealth Realm, a diverse array of regions that includes some of the wealthiest places on Earth. Think Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, just to name a few. If we were to put a price tag on the entire Windsor family's net worth, taking into account their extensive land holdings and influence across these prosperous nations, the estimate shoots up to a jaw-dropping $25 trillion. Now, that's not just wealth. That's an unparalleled concentration of power. While the Windsors may be presiding over a constitutional monarchy in modern times, their influence remains undiminished, and it goes beyond politics. 
people are so enamored with them that they permanently ink the royal family onto their bodies. Yes, we're talking about tattoos featuring none other than Queen Elizabeth herself. It's safe to say you've reached peak popularity when your portrait becomes a permanent fixture on someone's skin. Yet, popularity is just one facet of the Windsor's grandeur. Let's talk wealth, a subject the royal family is well-versed in. Their impressive real estate portfolio includes several castles, mansions, and estates, each boasting a jaw-dropping price tag. Interestingly, they didn't even have to buy most of these properties. They've seamlessly woven their way into ownership through centuries of history. Enter the Royal Collection, an unparalleled treasury of art owned by the British royal family. With over 7,000 paintings, 40,000 watercolors and drawings, and about 150,000 old master prints, this collection is a testament to the Windsor's refined taste and cultural legacy. Historical photographs, tapestries, and the crown jewels, valued at a staggering $4 billion, contribute to this awe-inspiring collection. Essentially, if it's considered art, you can probably find it in the royal collection. Let's zoom in on some of the Windsor's opulent royal holdings. Take Kensington Palace, for instance, boasting an estimated worth of $630 million. Then there's Buckingham Palace, an iconic symbol of British royalty, with a jaw-dropping value of $4.9 billion, one of the most expensive and sought-after buildings globally. And here's the kicker. They just casually live in it. These glimpses into the luxurious world of the Windsors highlight not only their regal influence, but also their remarkable ability to seamlessly blend tradition, opulence, and cultural heritage into a lifestyle that captivates the world. The Windsors are not just a royal family. They are keepers of history, art, and an enduring legacy that spans centuries. Koch family. Mix oil money, time, and a generous dose of generational wealth, and you get the Koch family, a formidable dynasty of oil billionaires whose influence has left an indelible mark on the economic and political landscape of the United States. Currently boasting a net worth of $100 billion, the Koch family's journey to power traces back to a company with a somewhat cumbersome name. Originally known as the Wood River Oil and Refining Company, a moniker that didn't exactly roll off the tongue, it was eventually rebranded as Koch Industries in honor of Fred Koch, one of its early members. At the helm of this burgeoning empire were Fred Koch's two sons, David and Charles Koch, often affectionately referred to as the Koch brothers. The mere mention of their names would spark a cascade of Coca-Cola jokes, given the uncanny similarity in pronunciation. This familial duo played instrumental roles in steering Coke industries to unprecedented heights of success. That is, until David passed away in 2018 at the age of 79. To understand why the Koch family holds a prominent place on this list, consider the colossal reach of Coke industries, currently standing as the second-largest privately-owned company in the United States and the sixth-largest globally. With a staggering annual revenue of $115 billion, Coke Industries is not just wealthy, it's a powerhouse of prolific business ventures. The company's extensive portfolio encompasses a multitude of subsidiaries, engaging in a diverse array of industries. Their strategic acquisitions and expansive list of subsidiaries have positioned Coke Industries as a conglomerate that seemingly does it all. And this isn't an exaggeration. Let's delve into some of their strategic moves, such as the astute $22.5 billion acquisition of Georgia Pacific. This strategic move positioned them as one of the world's largest manufacturers and distributors of paper, offering a wide range of household products under well-known names like Brawny, Angelsoft, and Vanity Fair. But their business endeavors don't stop there. The Koch family has demonstrated keen foresight with the $7.5 billion purchase of Molex, a prominent electronic components manufacturer. 
This move not only solidified their presence in the tech industry, but also expanded their reach to collaborations with the National Guard of the United States, showcasing their involvement in sectors as diverse as paper, electricity, and security. It's a strategic diversity that suggests the Koch family is preparing for any conceivable scenario from the mundane to the catastrophic. Yet, the Koch family's influence goes beyond business ventures. They actively channel a significant portion of their wealth into shaping the political landscape of the country. With an extensive network of political contributions, advocacy groups, and think tanks, the Koch family plays a pivotal role in influencing policy decisions and shaping the trajectory of American politics. Interestingly, you don't need a royal title or an official political position to have politicians echoing your sentiments. Enter the Koch family, whose influence extends into realms far beyond their financial ventures. While their passion for real estate might not be as widely known, it's a facet of their portfolio that adds another layer to their multifaceted empire. Notably, the Koch family has made substantial forays into the world of real estate, signaling a strategic move into this dynamic industry. Their most notable venture in this realm is the acquisition of a multi-billion dollar, 63-story hotel and casino boasting a staggering 4,000 units on the iconic Las Vegas Strip. But this wasn't merely a one-off investment. It marked just the beginning of their ambitious plans in the hospitality sector. The Koch family has articulated their intent to acquire more hotels and expand their footprint in the hospitality industry. It seems the Koch family is on a mission to fill a proverbial bingo card of industries to conquer. Their diverse interests span energy, technology, paper manufacturing, and now, the expansive world of real estate. This strategic diversification reflects their dynamic approach to wealth accumulation and business expansion, showcasing an ability to adapt and thrive across varied sectors. Walton Family Let's shine a spotlight on the Walton Family, a powerhouse so formidable that their staggering net worth clocks in at a mind-boggling $169.7 billion. Their influence extends to a corporation of colossal proportions, one that boasts a net worth surpassing the GDP of some entire countries. It's a tale of immense wealth and corporate prowess that often flies under the radar, considering the scale of their empire. At the epicenter of this economic behemoth is Walmart, a name that resonates globally. While we're all familiar with the memes and the ubiquitous presence of Walmart in our daily lives, the sheer scope of its reach might surprise you. With approximately 10,000 Walmart stores spread across 24 countries, the company employs a staggering 2.2 million people worldwide. It's a scale of operation that reflects not just a retail giant, but an economic force that shapes livelihoods on a global scale. The roots of Walmart trace back to 1962 when it was founded by Sam Walton. From its modest beginnings, the company experienced exponential growth evolving into the world's largest company by revenue. Walmart's financial prowess is truly staggering, raking in over $540 billion, a figure that catapulted the Waltons into the coveted position of the richest family in the United States. The impact of Walmart on a community is nothing short of transformative, and its presence can be a double-edged sword. The sheer magnitude of this retail giant's influence is exemplified by its ability to reshape local economies. When Walmart establishes itself in a small town, the repercussions are palpable. Roughly half of its retail trade can vanish within a few years, succumbing to the dominance of this retail behemoth. It's a testament to the immense power that Walmart wields in the business landscape. What fuels this transformative force is Walmart's unparalleled reach and appeal. The company's customer base is nothing short of staggering, with approximately 220 million customers flocking to its stores every week. This isn't just a retail figure, it's a testament to Walmart's ability to cater to a broad demographic. Thanks to its commitment to low prices and an extensive range of products, Walmart has carved a niche that spans across virtually every stratum of society. 
The Walton's ascent to a net worth exceeding $100 billion didn't hinge on a single success. They've proven themselves to be adept entrepreneurs with a diversified portfolio. One notable venture in their repertoire is Sam's Club, a chain of warehouse clubs specializing in groceries and general merchandise. With a staggering 600 warehouses in operation, Sam's Club has proven to be a lucrative venture, generating profits that soar up to $57 billion. Beyond their business endeavors, the Waltons have made significant contributions in the realm of philanthropy. The Walton Family Foundation, a key player in their charitable initiatives, has directed substantial resources toward addressing environmental issues and promoting education. Their commitment to education is particularly noteworthy, with a whopping $1 billion allocated to this cause. Not content with business and philanthropy alone, the Waltons have also ventured into the political arena. While their political leanings may not follow a singular note, they've demonstrated a willingness to engage with various sides of the political spectrum. Different heirs to the Walmart throne have wielded their vast wealth to contribute significant sums to different sides of the political aisle. It's a strategic move, akin to a nuanced political drama, where the Waltons seek to influence policies with the finesse of a political chess match. Morgan Family the Morgan family's journey to international prominence traces back to the late 19th century, spearheaded by one of its most illustrious members, John Pierpont Morgan. J.P. Morgan, a name synonymous with the early industrialization of America, was destined for a career in banking, following in the footsteps of his father. His foray into the financial sector marked the beginning of a legacy that would eventually lead to the establishment of one of the most influential financial institutions in the United States, J.P. Morgan and Company. However, J.P. Morgan's impact wasn't confined to banking alone. In the late 1890s, he set his sights on the steel industry, orchestrating a strategic move that would reshape the economic landscape. Forming an alliance with the president of Carnegie Steel, he orchestrated the purchase of the entire company for a staggering $480 million, a sum that, at the time, exceeded the entire budget of the U.S. federal government. The year 1901 witnessed a pivotal moment in J.P. Morgan's business endeavors as he merged his various steel companies to establish U.S. Steel, a corporate giant with a valuation of $1.4 billion. This not only solidified his dominance in the banking industry, but also catapulted him to the zenith of the railroad industry. Controlling a staggering 60% of the steel industry further underscored his economic prowess. To add to his extensive list of accomplishments, J.P. Morgan sat on the board of directors for an astounding 48 different companies, a position that granted the Morgan family unparalleled political and economic influence on a global scale. J.P. Morgan's ascent to wealth and influence wasn't solely confined to the boardrooms and steel mills. He was also a prominent figure in the social circles of his time. Engaging in the elite echelons of society, Morgan was a member of several illustrious social clubs, providing him the opportunity to mingle and forge connections with some of the most influential men of his era. His influence extended to the establishment of his own exclusive club, aptly named the Metropolitan Club. This prestigious enclave boasted a roster of powerful members, counting fellow billionaire Cornelius Vanderbilt among its distinguished attendees. Morgan's prowess in business, however, was anything but gentle. Renowned for his cutthroat approach, he navigated the business landscape with a strategy that included bullying, outcompeting, and outright acquiring any competitors that stood in his way. His business acumen was marked by a relentless pursuit of success, often at the expense of those who dared to challenge his dominance. It was this ruthless determination that propelled Morgan to the summit of the financial world. The legacy of J.P. Morgan continued to reverberate long after his death in 1913. What remained in his wake was nothing short of a financial behemoth. The institution he founded evolved into the largest bank in the United States, 
amassing assets with a staggering valuation of $3.7 trillion. In the grand tapestry of finance, J.P. Morgan and Chase emerged as the unrivaled giant, officially securing its place as the largest bank in the world by market capitalization. The ascent of J.P. Morgan and his family's influence extended beyond the confines of traditional banking. Their power was magnified by their ability to control the U.S. gold supply, a feat that underscored their unparalleled command over critical economic resources. Moreover, they orchestrated a syndicate of bankers, wielding their financial acumen to stabilize the economy of an entire country. It was a testament to the Morgan family's mastery of economic dynamics on a scale that few could fathom. Rockefeller Family The Rockefeller saga unfolds with John D. Rockefeller, a figure intricately woven into the fabric of international power and intrigue, much like the Rothschilds. Born in rural New York to a father with a knack for deception and a deeply religious mother, Rockefeller's early life set the stage for a journey that would redefine the landscape of the oil industry. In stark contrast to his dubious father, John D. Rockefeller emerged as a serious, polite, and honest young man. At the tender age of 17, he commenced his career as a bookkeeper at a small produce firm. Immersed in the intricacies of the work, Rockefeller's industrious nature blended seamlessly with a keen financial acumen, laying the groundwork for his future endeavors. As the internal combustion engine dawned on the horizon, Rockefeller seized a groundbreaking opportunity. Forming a business partnership with a friend and his brothers, he ventured into the oil refining business. This strategic move unfolded at a time when others were consumed with the pursuit of extracting oil from the earth. The discovery of vast oil reserves in Texas and the increasing exploitation of oil in the Middle East marked a pivotal moment. It became evident that oil was the resource of the future. Yet the infrastructure for refining this precious commodity into fuel and other products was sorely lacking. In the midst of the oil-gold rush, where entrepreneurs worldwide opened prospecting and drilling companies, a crucial gap remained unaddressed, the need for efficient oil processing. It is at this juncture that the Rockefeller family entered the scene. Their role in establishing the infrastructure for oil refining would prove instrumental in shaping the trajectory of the oil industry and, consequently, the global economy. The Rockefeller saga took a decisive turn with the establishment of Standard Oil in 1870, a pivotal moment that catapulted John D. Rockefeller into the echelons of immense wealth and power. Standard Oil's founding marked the genesis of a seismic shift in the oil industry, propelling Rockefeller to control a staggering 90% of America's oil pipelines and refineries. The zenith of Rockefeller's financial empire faced a reckoning with the enactment of antitrust laws in 1911. The family's monopoly, embodied by Standard Oil, was dismantled. Despite this legal intervention, the Rockefellers retained a substantial stake in the national oil production industry. Their influence persisted, albeit in a transformed landscape. At the time of John D. Rockefeller's demise in 1937, his valuation stood at an astronomical $340 billion in today's dollars, a figure that dwarfs even the contemporary wealth of titans like Bill Gates four times over. However, the trajectory of Rockefeller's family wealth underwent a remarkable evolution. In the wake of this record high valuation, a surge in international competition and a perceived lack of financial acumen among Rockefeller's descendants precipitated a considerable decline. As the family navigated a changing economic landscape, their wealth plummeted to an estimated $11 billion. This decline, though substantial, paints a picture of a family that, even in the face of diminished fortunes, maintains a considerable financial standing. The Bush Family The Bush Family, prominently recognized for Presidents George W. Bush and George Bush Sr., embarked on its journey to international prominence with the patriarch, Prescott Sheldon Bush, 
a distinguished U.S. banker and senator. However, the Bush family's ascent to power is shadowed by historical controversies. Accusations of significant profits during World War II and allegations of establishing businesses with corporations that financed Hitler's government have cast a contentious light on their legacy. The revelation of declassified documents in 2003 further few-led scrutiny, exposing transactions that potentially violated the Trading with the Enemies Act. One particular revelation in 1943 added another layer of complexity to the family's narrative. It was disclosed that a Polish mining interest, in which Prescott Bush held investments, was implicated in utilizing forced labor from Auschwitz. In response, Prescott Bush distanced himself from these allegations and initiated efforts to collect funds for the victims of the war. The scrutiny surrounding the Bush family extends beyond historical controversies, encompassing allegations of profiting from wars initiated during their respective presidencies. While these accusations may appear more attenuated than those against Prescott Bush, they form a notable part of the family's narrative. In particular, both presidents George W. Bush and George Bush Sr. have faced criticism for their roles in wars conducted under their leadership. These allegations, though subject to debate, contribute to the complex legacy of the Bush family. Notably, George Bush Sr.'s reluctance to engage in a conflict with Iraq is a well-documented aspect of his presidency. The decision to go to war was reportedly influenced by persistent pressure from Britain, adding a nuanced layer to the family's historical involvement in global affairs. The intricate dynamics of political decisions and international relations further complicate the Bush family's legacy. Despite the controversies and the nuanced nature of their involvement in conflicts, the family's ascent to having two members become presidents of the United States has undeniably bestowed upon them international prestige and influential connections. This status positions them as arguably the single most powerful family alive today, with their impact resonating not only in the annals of American history, but on the global stage. The Dupont family, the Dupont family, tracing its origins to a French immigrant who arrived in the United States during the 1800s, has etched its place in history by constructing an empire grounded in the manufacturing and distribution of industrial chemicals and military munitions. Commencing their journey as gunpowder manufacturers, the DuPonts swiftly rose to prominence, emerging as the primary supplier of gunpowder to the U.S. military. Their endeavors expanded to the industrial-scale production of dynamite, further solidifying their foothold in the explosives industry. As with many monopolies, the DuPont monopoly faced dissolution in the early 1900s under the Sherman Antitrust Act. Despite this, the family adeptly preserved a substantial market share in the global munitions industry. Their influence reached a pinnacle during the First World War when they supplied almost 40% of all munitions used by the Allied forces. Diverging from some contemporaries, such as the Morgan family, the DuPonts exhibited a sense of responsibility towards the nation they profited from. This commitment was exemplified during World War II when the U.S. government sought assistance for the Manhattan Project, a crucial endeavor to produce plutonium. The DuPont Company played a pivotal role, clandestinely designing and constructing one of the largest plutonium plants in the country. This covert operation aimed to safeguard the research from Axis powers, underscoring the family's dual role as industrial magnates and contributors to national defense. In the 1950s, following the Soviet Union's detonation of its first atomic bomb, the DuPont Company once again collaborated with the U.S. government to contribute to the development of the hydrogen bomb. This partnership aimed to maintain America's technological advantage over Soviet competitors in the escalating arms race. Engaging in a symbiotic relationship with the U.S. government, DuPont played a crucial role in channeling the efforts of the nation's scientists toward achieving this strategic objective, all the while receiving substantial compensation from the government. Despite being recognized as the second most powerful family globally, 
the DuPonts curiously find themselves relatively untouched by wild conspiracy theories, with one notable exception. Accused of playing a role in instigating the United States' prohibition of hemp and cannabis in 1937, ostensibly to protect their interests in paper and nylon manufacturing, the DuPonts have become a target for those critical of stringent anti-marijuana laws. This theory posits that the DuPont, in advocating for such legislation, aimed to eliminate competition and safeguard their economic interests. The alleged connection between the DuPont family and the prohibition of hemp and cannabis has sparked debates about the motives behind anti-marijuana laws. Critics argue that these laws, driven by economic interests, hindered the widespread use of hemp in manufacturing, a potential threat to DuPont's earnings. Despite being relatively free from conspiracy theories, this particular accusation has persisted over the years, highlighting the family's complex position in historical and economic contexts. Looking forward, speculation arises about the DuPont's potential engagement in hemp-related industries if marijuana were to be legalized nationally. Given their immense wealth and historical prowess in various sectors, it is conceivable that the family could establish a dominant position in the growing and processing of hemp products, maintaining a competitive edge against potential rivals. The Astor family. The Astor family were once the wealthiest family in the U.S., and even today the name still dominates New York City, from Astor Place in Greenwich Village to Astoria in Queens. The Astor family's captivating narrative unfolds across numerous generations, with its origins anchored in John Jacob Astor, the family patriarch. Born in Germany in 1763, Astor emigrated to the United States in the late 18th century, commencing his career as a fur trader and swiftly ascending to a leading role in the fur trade business. Beyond fur trading, John Jacob Astor showcased his business acumen by making strategic investments in New York City real estate, particularly in the burgeoning Manhattan area. He used his fortune to purchase 70 acres of prime Manhattan real estate, including the areas surrounding Times Square and along the Hudson River. By the time he died, aged 84 in 1848, he was worth $30 million, equivalent to over $1 billion today. His success in these ventures elevated him to one of the wealthiest individuals in the United States, setting the stage for the enduring prominence of the Astor family. The family's imprint on New York City is particularly striking, with descendants venturing into diverse business realms including real estate development and financial investments. The Astor name became synonymous with wealth and social standing, playing a pivotal role in the growth and development of the city. An iconic contribution of the Astor family is the Astor Library, founded by John Jacob Astor's grandson, William Backhouse Astor Sr. Established in the mid-19th century, the library eventually merged with others to form the renowned New York Public Library. Wealth and influence persisted through subsequent Astor generations, manifesting in philanthropic endeavors, participation in social activities, and civic responsibilities. However, like many affluent families, the Astors encountered controversies and legal disputes related to inheritances and family fortunes. The sinking of the Titanic in 1912 is a tragic event associated with the Astor family, John Jacob. Astor IV, a great-grandson of the original patriarch, lost his life in the disaster. Despite the sorrow, the incident spotlighted the family's wealth and prominence. While the Astor family's influence has diminished over time, their enduring impact on New York City's development and their status as one of the preeminent American families of the 19th and early 20th centuries remain substantial. It is crucial to acknowledge that, like many influential families, the Astors have been subject to conspiracy theories and rumors. However, Approaching such claims with skepticism and relying on verified historical information is essential for an accurate understanding of their legacy. Which of these families do you think is truly the most powerful in the world? Drop a comment below to share your thoughts with me. Let's set aside any conspiracy theories for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.